Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Qadaybiyah Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Stephen Mnuchin, U.S. President Advisor Jared Kushner, U.S. President Envoy to the Middle East Jason Greenblatt, and Iran and Senior Policy Advisor to the Secretary of State Brian Hook on the occasion of their visit to Bahrain to participate in the peace for Prosperity workshop hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King received a letter from the U.S. President Donald Trump on the friendship and cooperation relations, hailing the partnership with Bahrain. Trump also hailed the Army's organization of the workshop. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the U.S. President's keenness on bolstering historic relations. His Majesty welcomed the U.S. delegation, wishing them and all participants in the workshop success. His Majesty expressed pride in the deep-rooted strategic relations binding Bahrain and the United States and the development of bilateral cooperation in various fields. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Qadaybiya Palace the Managing Director and Chairman of the International Monetary Fund, Christine Lagarde, who is visiting the Kingdom to participate in the Peace for Prosperity workshop. His Majesty the King welcomed the Managing Director and her participation in this important workshop, hailing the advanced level of relations and cooperation between Bahrain and the International Monetary Fund. His Majesty also expressed appreciation of the fund's role in maintaining the safety of the global economy to address the economic and financial challenges facing the countries of the world as well as supporting efforts to achieve sustainable development. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the President of FIFA, Gianni Infantino, on the occasion of his visit to the country. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the support of FIFA President to Bahraini sports, particularly football, to achieve the highest levels and desired goals. His Highness Sheikh Nasser discussed with Infantino the means of developing Bahraini football highlighting the support it receives from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the continuous support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He noted that this support will enable Bahraini sports to achieve many goals in the next stage, which is an incentive to make further achievements. His Highness hailed the outstanding successes FIFA achieved, led by infant 
Valentino, affirming that Bahraini football benefited from the Federation's programs and support, stating that Bahrain has remarkable cooperation relations with FIFA. His Highness Sheikh Nasser asserted that FIFA president's previous visit achieved many gains following the discussion on developing Bahraini football, noting that the current visit affirms his keenness on following up on all matters to continue the development of Bahraini sports, particularly football. He expressed aspirations to build a partnership with the Federation to achieve the plans of developing Bahraini football. For his part, FIFA president expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for the warm welcome and for his keenness on developing Bahraini sports, noting they achieved a quantum leap in the previous stage. He wished Bahraini sports success. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Council Chairman Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani yesterday participated in the graduation ceremony of the third batch affiliated with Brinks Company, which was patronized by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed. Over 200 international startups and companies operating in the field of internet and smart devices participated in the ceremony, which was held at the Batelco commercial building in Bab al Bahrain. He expressed admiration with the level of applications and projects that were presented. During the ceremony, the minister praised the development of the emerging companies, which have become the focus of international economists and investors working in all fields. He noted that Bahrain is striving to promote startup companies, which are now an essential element in building the economic system. Al Zayani pointed out that Small and Medium Enterprises Development Council is launching a number of initiatives in support of entrepreneurship, including providing incubation services and speeding up businesses where 21 incubators were licensed, benefiting more than 600 startups. He added that Bahrain Exports Center was launched to promote national exports and enhance its quality to promote Bahrain's position as a global trading partner. The Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumih affirmed that Bahrain's national plan to promote national belonging and consolidate the values of citizenship reflects the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who confirmed that Bahrain will forever remain an oasis of peace and prosperity and uphold the principles of coexistence, tolerance, and moderation. Al Rumih praised the patronage of the Minister of Interior and President of the follow up. Committee for Implementation of the National Plan, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and his keenness to promote national belonging and consolidate the values of citizenship through 70 initiatives aimed to achieve definite objectives. The Minister of Information said that the Ministry offers all its capabilities to ensure the successful implementation of its assigned initiatives, including the activation of laws and regulations, professional code of ethics for the various media channels to showcase the Bahraini citizens' positive image. The ministry supports all the media platforms in order to boost the efforts aimed to promote the national sense of belonging, preserve the nation's accomplishments and serve the kingdom's development and modernization. He said that working team was formed to follow up the media plan. The ministry will provide all forms of media support to the partners for implementation of the national plan across its main themes, programs, PR, media, curricula, legislation and regulation initiatives. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, deputized the Commander in Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force (BDF), Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, to attend the 11th graduation ceremony of the Joint Command and Staff Session. The ceremony was attended by the Defense Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuaimi. The Commandant of the Royal Command Staff and National Defense College, Rear Admiral Abdullah Saeed Al Mansouri, delivered a speech in which he extended deepest thanks and gratitude and loyalty to His Majesty the King for patronizing the graduation ceremony.
After that, a Bahraini graduate and another representing participants from Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Oman, Jordan, Egypt and Yemen delivered statements on behalf of the graduates in which they praised the Royal Command, Staff and National Defense College and stressed the importance of the session in their military career. Then a poem was recited on behalf of the participants from brotherly countries. لهم قدرا كبير كلكم شعب وحكومة لكم منا عجاب مجدكم يا أخوان نجلة ما هو مجد صغير تمنون الخايف اللي يشوف المسراب وتمنون اللي من الوقت جاكم يستجير يجعل ربي ينشي مراويح السحاب فوق قبر أبو حمد يامر الله كل خير أشهد إن خلف الحاكم اللي ما يهاب حاكم قاد المسيرة ودربه مستنير يا حمد جدان كلي يفكون الصعاب فعلهم يعرف اليجاهم اليوم الخطير واشهد انك في المسيرة ما ضيعت الكتاب اشهد انك عز دارك لليوم الاخير واشهد انك لا تركيت مركاك الشباب ايه سلمان الولد والامير ابن الامير في ذراكم يا ولي العهد شعبك شعب ما يخاب في ذراكم يا ولي العهد شعب ما يخاب انتم لهم عز وانتهلوا ذبك الضرير واشهد انك يا خليفة ابن احمد ما تغاب قايد القوة وعسر الامر عندك يسير روسكم من فضل ربي على متر السحاب وفي الملاقة جمعكم يغلب الجمع الغفير ولا زحمتوا من قريب ترانا للصعاب سيفنا عند المواجه ما يرجع في الجفير كل شايب السعودية السعودية تراها على العاي العذاب لا دعا دعا المواقف وجككم تستدير كل شاي من ولاة الأمر يرجع شباب باسم سلمان السعد حمل هذا المستجير لا ذكرت أبو فهد كأنه يقول الصعاب شارب من فنجالها في ضحى اليوم الكبير لا ذكرت أبو فهد كأنه يقول الصعاب شارب من فنجالها في ضحى اليوم الكبير المعادي قد منا بين ضرس وبين ناب دام سلمان الملك والولي رجل جدير إيه قلت محمد اللي طموح للهضاب ماخذ من راس أبوهم كان صكة ما يحير ما ذخر المعتدي كود قصاص الرقاب للقريب درع جنب وللعدا شر شرير الله يحفظ الملوك اللي يفكون النشاب والله يديم الخليج بعز لليوم الأخير Then the Defense Affairs Minister honored the outstanding graduates and presented graduation certificates to participants from the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Kuwait, Jordan, Egypt and Yemen. He congratulated them on their graduation, wishing them success in serving their countries. The Supreme Council for Women, SCW, chaired by the wife of His Majesty the King, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, hailed the resolution of the Cabinet meeting today regarding the referral of a draft law amending Article 8 of the General Budget Law to the Coordinating Committee to make it more responsive to the integration of women's needs into development programs to ensure the principle of justice, equal opportunity, and use available resources to achieve participation and justice between both sexes. The Council stressed the importance of this approach, which is consistent with the developments in Bahrain in terms of policies and legislation that support the advancement of women and enhances the Kingdom's international standing by adopting the best corporate practices in integrating women's needs in budgets, plans and services. The Secretary General of the Council, Halal Ansari, hailed the resolution of the Ministry of Finance and National economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, on the appropriations, regulations and instructions for the implementation of the state budget for the fiscal years 2019-2020. Al Ansari noted the clarity of the new resolution, its directives and guidance in regard to the implementation of programs and initiatives of the strategic plan for the implementation of the national plan for the advancement of Bahraini women 2019-2022. 
She added that it also affirms the importance of taking into account the state institutions' allocations of support services for women in the work environment. The U.S. Embassy in Bahrain organized today a press roundtable discussion with U.S. Special Envoy for Iran and Senior Policy Advisor to the Secretary of State, Brian Hook, who is currently visiting Bahrain to discuss means of strengthening cooperation in the region to face escalating tensions with Iran, who is the biggest threat for peace and stability. Hook mentioned that he had a fruitful meeting this morning with the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and will be meeting tomorrow the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad bin Muhammad Al Khalifa. Secretary Pompeo asked me to head to the region in light of uh, escalating tensions uh, with Iran. Iran has been escalating um, its foreign policy. Iran runs an expansionist and violent foreign policy, and they have been responsible for many attacks here lately in the Gulf, over half a dozen attacks that we've been tracking, uh, maritime attacks, attacks in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere. And so uh, we have put in place a, a strategy of diplomatically isolating Iran and imposing enormous economic pressure on the regime so that we drive up the costs of this kind of behavior. Iran is the last revolutionary regime on earth, and so much of the suffering and bloodshed and instability in the Middle East is caused by Iran directly and indirectly through its proxies. And so uh, I'm here in the region to deepen our alliances uh, across security and uh, diplomatic, uh, deepen those ties, and to talk how we can work together to deter future Iranian attacks. For 40 years, uh, from the time that this revolutionary regime uh, took power in 1979, uh, they, have, uh, they have been exporting uh, this ideology. And whether they started in, in Lebanon, and now here we are. They had a very good run, I think, over the last 10 years, thanks to the Iran deal, spending the sanctions relief on Hezbollah and on Assad's war machine in Syria, supporting uh, Shia proxies in Iraq, the Houthis in Yemen, here in Bahrain, supporting underground cells uh, that have attempted uh, and tried to destabilize the government, but they've been unsuccessful. Um, and so Saudi Arabia is the subject of regular missile attacks by Iranian surrogates. And um, the United States uh, now identifies uh, the uh, Iranian regime as the biggest threat to peace and stability in this region. U.S. Special Envoy for Iran and Senior Policy Advisor to the Secretary of State Brian Hook also highlighted the violent escalating actions of Iran in the region lately. He assured that cooperation and coordination with partners in the region is strong and successful. Moreover, he called on the world to unite and stand up to face the Iranian regime to avoid further violence and terrorism. On May 12th, uh, the Iranian regime conducted attacks uh, off the coast of the Emirate of Fujairah. And they attacked a Saudi tanker, an, Irani, uh, an, an Emirati tanker, and a Norwegian tanker. And then uh, you also had further attacks on June 13th, more tanker attacks. And um, this is what Iran has been doing to retaliate against Saudi Arabia and UAE for helping to offset the loss of Iranian crude oil that the market has experienced. We have now zeroed out all imports of Iranian crude oil. That's 3% of the world's oil supply. The Saudi Arabia and UAE working with the United States has been able to offset that loss. And we have been able to keep oil, the oil market very stable after taking off 3% uh, of the world's oil supply. So we're, we have very tight coordination with our Gulf partners in the region. And we are running a very successful foreign policy. And from my tour here in the Gulf, I have heard only unequivocal support for the president and his foreign policy to Iran. The world needs to hold Iran accountable for its nuclear program, its missile program, its regional aggression, its arbitrary detention of dual nationals, its systematic human rights violations. And we need to hold Iran accountable because if we don't stand up to this regime, it is going to expand and it is going to try to dominate more and more of the Middle East. The Iranian regime is attempting to create a Shia corridor of control to dominate this region. And it's very important that, that especially here in the Gulf, that 
that governments stand up. And we have deepened our security partnerships in this region by uh, accelerating arms sales to the region because we want our partners here to be strong and sovereign and secure against threats coming from across the Gulf.